Welcome back. In this lecture, we will discuss activation functions that are a key component in the architecture of artificial neural networks. And so by the end of this lecture, you should be able to describe the role of activation functions, and we'll go over a few of the more common activation functions, and this will be very useful information throughout, uh, you know, a lot of other lectures in this course. So you might want to bookmark this one. So an activation function, a couple things about it is it is confining that linear combination of the inputs to the artificial neuron to a specific range in, in general. We want it to be differentiable, and probably this is the single most important characteristic that we want to uh, identify. Nonlinear functions tend to be preferred. Um, linear functions will not confine the value to a range as much. Um, in general, we want to see functions that distribute values more toward extremes. So the logistic function is an activation function uh, that we probably have seen in other contexts in machine learning, and it comes up here again for that reason. Uh, the choice of activation function can directly impact the accuracy of the model, especially when you look at what's in the inner layers. Some activation functions are better suited for, say, the outer layers versus uh, the, the hidden layers. And also, um, the issues with gradient descent have also led to different activation functions being uh, developed over time. So the first is uh, the most simple activation function. That's just the linear activation function. It's just g of x equals x. Um, this does not change the neuron at all. And it's generally only used as part of an output layer, just as a way to combine maybe that last hidden layer of analysis done by uh, the network in a single output. The next function also tends to appear in the output layer. It's called the softmax activation function. Now, this particular activation function is a little bit unique in that it is considering other uh, neurons in the layer. So we are looking at um, the value of input um, xi compared to a summation over all of these other inputs. And so the reason why this is useful is that it allows you to normalize um, the final layers of the neural network and be able to treat the output as a probability because this is giving you uh, a probability distribution. And so one reason why you'd want to do that is for a multi-class classification problem. And we already touched on that last bullet there. The next one is the uh, sigmoid activation function. And here we get the, um, we're just, uh, this is just the logistic function of the argument. And this was one of the earliest introduced activation functions in neural network research. And so a lot of the older papers, especially prior to 2012, uh, use sigmoid a great deal. Um, but today it's less used in modern systems, uh, mainly due to the fact that uh, in practical terms, ReLU and variants of ReLU that we'll touch on a little later uh, perform a lot better when you have very deep neural network structures. When the sigmoid function was used uh, more widely, it was really prior to the advent of very deep neural networks that were only enabled since 2012 due to the use of GPU processing. The hyperbolic tangent function, uh, this is a uh, well accepted alternative to sigmoid. Uh, traditionally this is used in inner layers, but this too 
uh, has fallen a little bit out of favor compared to the ReLU function. So enough uh, mentioning it, here is the ReLU function itself. So um, one thing interesting about this is, um, you know, first, it's uh, simply returning zero if the input is less than zero, and it returns the value if it's greater than zero. So on the higher end, it's not really confining the range, um, but it's, you know, it's definitely confining it at the lower. However, because of this, uh, the ReLU function is not differentiable when x equals zero, but in practical implementation, setting x equals to zero um, works well in, uh, in everyday systems. So it has become extremely common. Uh, this one was originally um, shown to provide much superior performance to other activation functions, especially in convolutional neural networks. Um, it is generally used in the hidden layers, and it is what is called uh, non-saturating. So it does not approach a value as x increases. And then, as I mentioned before, uh, in practice, we just set the gradient to be zero when x equals zero. The next is a variant of ReLU called the leaky ReLU. And so one thing by having, if x is less than zero, setting the function equal to zero, uh, this causes some issues with gradient descent because uh, as you take partial derivatives with respect to the functions at each layer, once something goes to zero, that's going to start wiping out your gradient uh, maybe more quickly than desirable, and that leads to a halting of the learning process. We'll touch on more of that in a later lecture. But this has caused a bit of a problem, so to avoid it, instead of just setting the gradient to zero, set it to just a very small value. And that's the idea behind this. Uh, a very recently introduced function, well, introduced in 2016, is the Gaussian error linear unit function. Now, this one is a more sophisticated version of ReLU that has a probabilistic interpretation. Um, what it's essentially doing is it's multiplying the input by a cumulative probability uh, distribution function over the normal distribution of the input. And uh, this is what has become very popular in the so-called BERT models, which is a transformer architecture used, uh, uh, used for like things like language translation and stuff like that. Now note that because of the use of the cumulative distribution function, oftentimes you will see approximations of both the function itself and its derivative. We show just the approximation of the derivative. Um, in PyTorch, they actually have implemented the full version of this function. So that's it for today's uh, lecture on activation functions. Stay tuned for more content.